All right, there's a first for everything. Uh, first of all, this is the world's first mass-produced electric car, the Nissan Leaf. Sure, there were other small batch cars like the Tesla Roadster, but that car really isn't even certified in Canada. Each car that has to come into Canada needs a special exemption, so that's really not a mass-produced car. Nissan claims that the Leaf is certified in Canada and a lot of places around the world, and you can go to a dealer and order one today. And another first, I'm doing this in the laneway behind my house. And you're probably wondering, why are we in the back laneway? Well, first of all, you have to plug the leaf in. It's plugged in here at the front of the car with a, a standard outlet. General Motors, along with the other manufacturers, helped develop this standard outlet. And it plugs into all new electric or extended range cars. Now, the other part of it goes inside the garage, and that's why I'm here in the back lane. You need at least a 120 volt outlet and I have one in the back. I usually park in the front of the house, but I don't want to run an extension cord uh, across the sidewalk. And my garage here is just a single garage and it's full of junk. It takes about eight hours to charge up to give you 160 kilometers of range. So we're going to get in, we're going to drive, and we'll continue the rest of this somewhere nicer than the back lane. Now, even though the Nissan LEAF has a near luxury price tag, the interior is not a luxury car in any way. It's a study in efficiency. All the money and the cost of the car went into the drive system and being able to run purely on a battery and not on putting luxury features. For example, the steering wheel, it, where is it here? The steering wheel goes up and down, but it doesn't go in and out, so it doesn't telescope. There's hard plastic on the dashboard. The seat, uh, for example, doesn't have a lot of adjustment up and down. It's quite plain on the inside, but it's a minimalist approach. The center shifter here is more like the Prius. They have their shifter on the dash, but the same kind of approach, you just toggle it back and forth. The seats are wide and they're comfortable. And the center console gives you information on the screen. You can actually find out what other Leaf drivers are doing through Nissan's car wing system. And it basically gets into your sense of competition. Who can drive the most efficiently? Who can go the most kilometers on a single charge? And there's also a screen here just above the steering wheel. It's the speedometer, but next to it, the more efficiently you drive, more branches of a tree appear and some leaves as well. And makes you show, uh, it shows you basically how well you're driving. So the inside is more of a study on efficiency and not on luxury, even though the price tag sort of dictates this should be more of a luxurious interior. Now the starting price of the Nissan LEAF is just under $39,000. That's a lot of money and there's a lot of people say that there should be rebates placed on this vehicle. But the reality is there are plenty of cars. If you walk around or drive around Toronto, Calgary, Montreal, Vancouver, any of the major cities in the country, there are plenty of people who can afford a Mercedes, a BMW, an Audi, you name it. There's lots of people out there that can afford this car and they should be appealing to those luxury buyers because the ride you get with the Leaf is so smooth and quiet and refined, it's even better than most luxury cars can produce. Now the aesthetics on the outside of the Leaf, what you can't see that well on camera is that the headlights here are really raised quite far up and that's to help break the wind as the car goes through the air to break the wind down over the windshield and smooth it out over the surface of the car. Makes the car very aerodynamically efficient and that reduces the amount of energy that this vehicle needs. Overall, the shape is pleasing. There's room for five people inside, plenty of cargo space as well. That's because the battery pack goes along the bottom of the car. It isn't in the cargo area, it goes underneath the bottom of the car. So we're gonna take it out for a drive and see what the first impressions are of the Nissan LEAF. Now, the first thing you notice when you drive the Nissan LEAF is just how smooth and quiet it is. You can't really hear anything. And that's why I think it should appeal to luxury buyers. Anybody that's in the market for a pure, smooth, quiet luxury car will be attracted to this car, even though, as I mentioned, the interior doesn't have the same kind of amenities. Now, the other thing is the battery is low down on the bottom of this car, which means that it handles quite well because it's got a low center of gravity. And because electric motors have so much torque right off the line, you can take off out of the gate with this vehicle and it, it moves along, it hustles along very nicely. So it's a satisfying car to drive as well and it doesn't feel frustrating. That's the problem with, say, the Prius, for example. It can be some hard work to drive. This car, after about 30 minutes, you forget at all 
all that you're driving an electric car. You're just driving something that's satisfying to drive and it's actually a lot of fun knowing that you're the only one on the road or one of very few that has an electric car. Okay, here's one of the problems with the Nissan LEAF electric car. In optimal conditions, you can get up to 160 kilometers on one charge. Now, what you have is a situation where when the temperature is colder, you've got the heat on in the car, the electric seats on in the car, the radio going, all of that kind of stuff, it limits the range of the car. So right now in regular drive mode, it says that I have 132 kilometers of available battery or range. Now when I turn the heat on, which we do in Canada quite often, turn the heat on, it drops down to 98, so from 132 down to 98 kilometers of range on this vehicle. So you can see the cold weather and just turning the heat on really impedes the available range of this vehicle and that is going to be a limiting factor in Canada. Now I could see if you lived in California, it might not be the situation, but in California you have different troubles. You've got to put the air conditioning on. So the problem with just an electric car without having the extended range, say, of the Volt, you do have a limited range and you always have to be always cognizant of how far you can go and how much battery charge is left. As the first mass-produced electric car sold in the world, the Nissan LEAF is an excellent first attempt. You get up to 160 kilometers on one charge. Now granted, it, it is limited when you turn the things on like the heat and the air conditioning, but it is possible. This vehicle really is for somebody that lives in the middle of the city and drives around as a commuter on shorter trips. The range anxiety above 160 kilometers or even down to 100 depending on the conditions really are going to limit this vehicle to people just in the city. That's why the Chevrolet approach to having an extended range electric vehicle has some appeal. For just under $39,000, you get a whole lot of technology packed into this car. $5,000 rebate offered in British Columbia, $8,000 rebate offered in Ontario, and $8,500 offered in Quebec. And that makes the price tag of this vehicle a lot more attractive. I'm not a big believer in putting rebates on cars that people can afford. Now, some will say this is expensive, but there are people out there that can afford a car at under $40,000. So first attempt from Nissan is fantastic. Can you imagine what the next one will be like? And the one after that, this is groundbreaking stuff the new Nissan Leaf.